And welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. I've got a uh, special gal I'm rather partial to here in the studio. She helps me run Waters Garden Center. In fact, she is she she are she is a Waters. <laughs> so she uh, born and raised here in in the, I think they had a birthing center right there in the back shed. <laughs> Your mom gave birth and you girls kind of all just grew up here at the garden center. So we're in a hospital. Okay. Prescott hospital. <laughs> yeah. We're probably regional. Back when there wasn't a wing, it was just the yeah. one, one, <laughs> it was one room and we've all grown up. So that was back in the seventies. when. Said seventies. Took 10 years off. <laughs> <laughs> they're looking at me going 70s mm. so, so this is uh this is uh, a garden question mm -hmm. just q a so what are people talking about just what are we hearing coming back in from our social media outlets or just people on the at sales for or emails back and forth we try to share those that's if it's timely and, and a good question so <laughs> no, we don't, we don't like it, it's out of here. Well, actually, actually, we take whatever <laughs> questions we can get to share them. <laughs> Especially this time of year. Yeah. Send us your questions, yeah. please. So what kind of questions do we have this week? Sure. Our first question is from Pat in Prescott Valley. She has a maple that's about six, seven years old. Notice the bark is really splitting on it. Um, parts of it are so split that they're lifting. You know, she could pull them off. Yeah. Wants to know what causes that. Is there yeah. anything she should be doing to correct it? Sure. Because um, she wants to keep that tree happy. Sure. It could be a couple things. So it doesn't, I, I'm not, I'm not alarmed. I mean, I just, you see bark that does that pretty often actually. Mm -hmm. So if it's on the south side of the tree, we have what's called sun scald mm -hmm. or um, where, where in the spring of the year, uh, early, early, early spring, when we're still getting freeze and thaw, the sun will come out. It'll warm up that sap on the south side. The sun hits it, and then the 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 uh, sap starts flowing, and then it mm -hmm. freezes real hard that night, and you, it'll actually expand and then cracks the bark. Mm -hmm. um, I can do the same thing to clay pots or to, you know, it does that to, to several things. It does it to trees. If it's on the south side, that's called sun scald. Mm -hmm. If it's on any other side... I wouldn't worry about it at all because it's probably just the bark is maturing. And as that bark thickens and becomes more cork like, it just starts to put on more and more layers of bark onto that tree. And so it'll just naturally get this crag, this character to it. It's right. quite pretty. You just enjoy it. It's part of the artist artistry of, of nature, how the, how the bark kind of matures when it's real young and thin and tender. It's real smooth and supple. It's just like people. Plants are just like people. As they mature, they, like get more, <laughs> they get more crags and cracks, and they need some Botox. So they don't. They're just, right. you, should, you enjoy it the way it is. So I'm yeah. guessing that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Either way, you fertilize it now. So put the 744 all-purpose plant food on that, on that shade tree. It'll either bring out more of that character of the bark or... If it's cracked, sun scald on the south side of that, that tree, it'll help it to heal over itself. Right. That's also the reason they uh, just trivia. The reason they plant the bark, they paint the bark white on trees, mainly fruit trees. You'll mm -hmm. see this uh, citrus down the valley. Uh, they're painting that white to reflect the sun. They, some people go, it keeps bugs off. There's no way paint keeps bugs off of a tree. That's impossible. They go right through it like it was nothing. But it's really good. A white paint reflects that heat so you get less flow. Mm -hmm. So it'll tend to stall or, or have that plant wake up a little later. And you don't get that cracking, mm -hmm. that sun scald on that. It's going from the trunk up to about the where the main crown starts. I mean, branches start to form. That's what they'll paint. Not the whole tree, just that lower bark where the sun can get to it. As the trees mature, the bark gets thicker. And so they protect themselves. And this, this, the uh, crown, the, the branching structure gets so large that it shades, shades it. itself. But yeah. when they're young, they can paint them mm -hmm. white to, to reflect the heat. That's, that's why they do it. Mm -hmm. You've come out. The new paints that they've come out with are actually more of a tan color, but they're UV. Yeah. UV oh, color. yeah. So new technology. Honey. New technology, <laughs> even in tree paint. My goodness, Mama, I can't believe what they come up with next. <laughs> I don't know where that came. That's my Arkansas. That's as close to Arkansas as I get. For all my Arkansas now friends. You just insulted Sorry. Everybody from Arkansas. It could have been from Mississippi. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My family's from Georgia, Georgia, so I can get away with that if okay. you're Georgian only. <laughs> <laughs> we'll move on to the next question. Yeah. It's from Marty and Prescott. She her great myrtles got pretty beat up in that yeah. hail. Plus, they're just kind of done blooming. How far back can she cut them at this point? Yeah. Uh, or don't wait until fall. That's yeah. Right. So, so great myrtles. So, we did get some hail pockets around the town. In fact, the greenhouses here got hit pretty hard. We're putting yeah. new, we're going to reskin them this winter, put new Lexan on them. So, that new polycarbon going on. They put, poked some holes in it. So, it did damage a few trees, kind of mm -hmm. took the top of the leaves, got kind of dinged. Yeah. And we're going, we're leaving the foliage on until they completely use their fall color and they drop their leaves. So don't be in a hurry, Marty. Leave that, leave the leaves on, even though they're torn or bruised, they're still able to create some photosynthesis and they're pulling all those sugars. There's, there's a thing that the plants do, they, as they shut down, they're pulling some of those carbohydrates back into the root structures. They're actively rooting right now. Right. So keep, don't, don't be in a rush. Mm -hmm. The other reason we don't prune this early, like they do down in Phoenix and stuff, or Palm Springs, or, or you know, the, the warmer areas, there's so many bugs out right now. There's so much disease being spread. There's powdery mildew, everything, <laughs> leaf spots are everywhere. If you make a cut, it opens up that wound so that the plant can actually, re, can it, it, it's exposed to disease and bugs and stuff. Okay. We'll wait until the cold, till the fall is over, the, dreams, the, the leaves have dropped. Typically by then, the, the bugs are hibernating or dead. And then we'll start pruning. After, enjoy the holidays. Prune after the holidays. So after, after New Year's, mm -hmm. go ahead and prune. Then you can make a cut and the, the sap is so, it, there's no bugs out and then it's, it's moving really slow. It Maybe just takes a lot of the pressure off. Yeah. So don't, yeah. don't be in a hurry, Marty. Good advice. All right. Next question is from Vern. He planted some large Austrians and spruce. Nice. Wants to know, do they really need to be staked oh. or are they... Okay. Yeah, so that's a that's a tricky one. So yes, Vern, they do, <laughs> and sure here's is. the reason why. So so a bigger pine and spruce. I'm guessing that's what it was. They come ball and burlap. That is, we grow them in a field like corn. So in a perfect row, we'll overpack them, then we'll harvest in between. Well, every other one, there's a, there's a there's a logic to it. But we're we're digging that. We grow it in the ground so that evergreen can get bushier and fuller. It grows a nicer specimen if you do that. And then we'll dig up a ball and we'll wrap it in burlap, thus the name ball and burlap. And so we're, we're root pruning as that, as that thing matures in the ground. And then we'll dig that up and put it into a pot. And that's what you're seeing at the garden center. I mean, right now you'll see uh, the bigger specimens are ball and burlap, the small, tiny, cute ones. Those are grown directly in the pot. Mm -hmm. So the ball and burlaps are heavy. Oh my gosh. They got, they're, they're hundred pounds easy. So you put them in the ground going, nothing can ever make this. I don't need to stake this. It's heavy enough. Well, what happens is that those first few snows are very heavy. They're usually, they're, they're just dense, heavy snow. And this big old evergreen can hold to, you know, a couple hundred pounds of weight. They're very sturdy. But the roots aren't there yet. So when, when they're mature, the roots kind of keep it upright and it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. You need to stake it for the first year to 18 months, first season at least. So the roots get fully rooted and then can hold that tree up, even under the heavy weight of a snow. Mm -hmm. So March is another real heavy, wet mm -hmm. type of, of snow. And that's what will get that plant to just kind of go full and falls right over. Yeah. Doesn't damage it. You can set it right back up. But then you lose all those fine root hairs that we're rooting. Yeah. It's like you're starting over, over, go and over and over again as you set this thing back up. Put some stakes on it. Mm -hmm. Yep, you keep to keep those roots root fully rooted. And by this time next year, you, you should be fine. Right. You're okay. And even in the spring, we get those prevailing winds, yeah. and all of a sudden you have a tree that's on yeah. a slant the whole time. You so. really do need to stake all trees mm -hmm. here at least for one year. And then you could probably take it off. So that's kind of the advice we give you. We got a stake kit. We have two kits, enough wire and a, and a V strap to kind of make it all go. And we make it easy so that you'll stake more trees because right. we believe in it. Ken Elise Lane, the Mountain Gardeners, be back right after this.